Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's edition of the Gamut Network. An incredibly interesting story we have to share with you today from an absolutely beautiful, I mean, look at this woman I have on the show today. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome Emily Gray to the show. Hi, Emily. Hey, Mindy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to have you. So let's, because I, I definitely have a lot to share with you. So I want to get in pretty quickly. If you could just share with us your, your personal story and journey. Yeah, so um, I had cancer when I was 11 years old. I was diagnosed with uh, osteosarcoma, which is a, a type of uh, bone cancer. And it's usually pretty aggressive, especially um, in children. So um, I, was, I was quite an active kid and uh, obviously it came as quite a shock. Um, I really loved running a lot and, you know, a lot of doctors and physical therapists thought it was just a muscle injury from all the running I was doing. So um, it kind of went on for quite a while and then I eventually saw a chiropractor and he saw that my hip was swollen mm. so and he said, you need to go for x-rays immediately. And um, that's when they thought it was osteosarcoma. And I almost straight away went in for uh, chemotherapy. And um, the chemo was so brutal that, you know, it just really almost kills the life inside of you. It's, it's really such a brutal experience. And I weighed about 25 kgs, which I think is like 50 pounds. At um, 11? At 11 years old? Yeah. Wow. And now, were, were you, where were you living at this point? I was in South Africa. Yeah, okay. So, um, and how medically is South Africa compared to here? Is it the same? Is it more advanced? Were you, tell me a little bit about that. Um, I was in a very good oncology unit. Um, it was a little company of Mary in, in um, Pretoria in South Africa. Um, so the, the doctors were very good and I think the nurses were um, incredible. Um, so I think I was in a good atmosphere. It was just the total shock of it all. Um, so, so after I was, I was going through six months of chemo, um, they saw that the, the cancer just wasn't reducing at all and it was actually just growing. So um, the, the doctors gave me two options and the one was to um, get a hip replacement, but the chances of me surviving were very low because the cancer could spread up to my lungs. Um, and then the other option was amputation. So I literally, you know, decided pretty much on the spot um, to amputate my left leg at the hip. So it's quite a high amputation. I'm a hip dysotic. Um, and then I went through a few more rounds of chemotherapy, but um, luckily, you know, I've, I'm, I've been in remission now for almost 20 years. Um, so so that's, that came through and that like, I just fortunately came over that whole experience and got through it all. Um, and then as a, you know, 12 year old girl, um, very self-conscious about now how my body looked and, you know, just my whole next phase of life seemed very, very bleak. Um, As you were entering your teenage years, which on a good day is challenging, <laughs> especially for, with girls. And what an unbelievably difficult decision at such a young age that you had to make. And, um, you know, I, I, I assume you had the support of your family and whatnot. Yeah. But did it, was it something that I know that you said that you made it pretty quickly, but did it become, you know, that notion of life or death that, you know, you would rather live life with one leg than take a chance and with two legs? It was really, um, it was, you know, life over limb. It was that like equation. And um, I knew that I had, the chemo and, and the everything was just so intense at that time that I was ready for it all to be over with. And if it meant having to lose a leg, you know, then that's, it, it has to be, that's what it is. Um, my biggest, my biggest upset was the fact that I knew I was never going to be able to run again. Um, I mean, never mind even walking as difficult as a hip dysotic, uh, because amputation is so high that, 
you know, you're missing your hip and your knee and your foot. It's like a lot of movements going on. So mm. just walking is tough. And then I found out that I wasn't going to run again. And that was extremely difficult to deal with. Um, but then my dad suggested I start swimming. And that was kind of like my method of rehabilitation. Mm. I didn't, I didn't um, work well with like psychologists and therapists because um, I felt I was really built up by it. And I was really like, I struggled to communicate my feelings. And I think that swimming and sport really gave me that avenue to um, work through all of those emotions in my head and, and, and slowly and surely start to feel more comfortable with myself. But that was a very long and hard process. Um, Do you think, because this is interesting, because I've interviewed quite a few people that sports has been a savior actually yeah. for them in that they felt you know more in control of the the direction of their life and the vehicle seemed to be sports whether yeah. that yeah i had you know an amazing man on that's a shot putter and you know he is also has a a limb difference um but it's it's very interesting how you know, critically important sports can be to the population of people with disabilities, whether that's even wheelchair basketball or, you know, the, the, the sleds that they play, hockey, hockey sled, yeah. Yeah. things like that. So it sounds like this was really critical in, in finding out, kind of di discovering who the new Emily yeah. is going to be. Yeah. Exactly. And I think it's, um, it's kind of underrated in that method of rehabilitation. I think that people don't fully realize what sport can do. And I guess, especially at a young age and parents mostly want to come with their kids and they want to, you know, shelter their kids and sports almost does that opposite effect. Sports is like, you got to go out there and you're going to be tough and you've got to push yourself hard and you've got to be okay with losing because you're not going to win all the time. So mm -hmm. I think um, it kind of goes against some parents' natural reaction, especially with, kids with disabilities um so it was extremely tough but my dad kind of had this tough love with me and I think that that really pulled me through and then um at 16 I I qualified for the Beijing Paralympics um and I was the youngest member on the team so I I, I swam for South Africa then and I continued swimming until 2016 and I went to the London 2012 games um, and then I went to, to uh, Rio in 2016 and then World wow. Champs in between there. So um, I was very fortunate to travel so much and meet incredible people because, you know, at the time of my amputation, there was no social media. So I really thought I was like the only girl alone. with this type of amputation yeah. at this age. I was really like very alone. Um, but then I started swimming and then you start seeing other people and, you know, the things they're achieving and the different types of disabilities. And then it just opens up this whole world. Um, so, you know, ever since then, I've been very proactive in sports and I, and I coach people with disabilities, um, learning to swim to like triathlons and Ironman. So I've, I've, been, I've coached a whole array of athletes because it's, it is really important to me and, and I think like what you said, it's just an incredible tool. It's an incredible tool. And do you ever have a moment? Like I definitely have a lot of these moments where I think about what my life would have been like if Oliver didn't come into my life and open up this whole world of people with disabilities that I really had very little experience. And I mean, I didn't even know what muscular dystrophy was, yeah. let alone my child had it. And I am so unbelievably grateful for this this gift and this newfound I mean I would have probably never met you and heard your incredible story do you ever like have a moment where you're like oh my god how life has turned out so incredible based on something that was so horrible that, yeah. that it had such an unbelievable silver lining yeah I think that so often and um even even now in these in these really difficult times with um, COVID and, and this pandemic and what's happening, I often think back to 
how, you know, I was faced with such a big challenge and how I, I had to see that challenge or that setback as an opportunity to go forward and to propel myself. Um, and, and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, just remind myself often in these times that are really difficult um, to use them in a positive way somehow, somehow find the nugget of wisdom in this whole thing that's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, if you lose your job, you know, try to, you know, if it wasn't your love and passion, maybe, maybe that's a good thing. You can like, now you have the time to be with family and friends and like go for another, another job, or another passion or start up another career or something like that, you know? Um, I think that it's really an opportunity to grow depending on how you see it. I love that. And I, and I agree. This is almost like a global reset that we have to like really take a step back and, and assess what's important, what isn't important. I mean, the fact that we all basically survived months of being in quarantine and, you know, just being with family and, that in and of itself is a bit of a gift that we yeah. never would have had that kind of time. But are you professionally right now um, kind of taking a reset? Where are you in your outside of swimming professional life? Outside of swimming? Well, I'm living in New York right now. Um, I, I moved to New York about three and a half years ago. Um, and when I moved to New York, I had a really bad prosthetic, really beat up old prosthetic. And I, I needed two crutches to walk um, because insurance in South Africa was just so bad. Um, and then I moved to New York and um, my good friend, uh, Caxmi Brutus, you might have known her. She was with the top Hill figure. Um, she was here at the time and she was just like such a... Um, ideal person to be around all the time and, um, and with everything that she did yeah i had the pleasure of uh, doing a speaking engagement uh with her in nashville and we got to spend a lot of time together and she's just she was a force of nature that's so, just what she was yeah she was anybody that was lucky enough to have her in your life was truly yeah. lucky yeah i have my i actually have a picture of her up here the teen book cover because mm-hmm. I think she was just such such an idol to so many people. So I um, I definitely aspire to her a lot. Um, so so my prosthetic was very bad, and and then I went to um, Prosthetics in Motion, which is a prosthetic company in New York City, and they uh, designed a whole new leg for me, and it it was so well fitting that I walked almost four hours after I got fit, which wow. is incredible because. You, I hadn't walked for like 15, 16 years. Been struggling with prosthetics a lot. So um, I was able to walk shortly after that. And then, I mean, last year I got my running leg and I was actually able to run, which was something that, you know, as, like I said earlier, it's just like crazy. It's, 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 um, was so, I couldn't have even imagined being able to do that. And um, I think that, you know, that, that saying sometimes like shoot, shoot for the moon and you land amongst the stars. I, I sometimes think that like if you shoot for the stars, you could also land amongst the moon because sometimes life just happens and it could get so crazy and you could be so lucky in so many ways just from who you know and how you get by in life. And I think that the community around amputees everyone just wants to help each other everyone wants to be there for each other so it's a very you know anyone who's in this community is very fortunate to be in this community i completely agree and i i love the notion of you you probably years ago never thought you would ever run again and now here you are now is the running leg does that have a blade is that how it yeah. runs so it, it oh. it's a blade and then i've got a movie knee and a hip so it's a lot of like coordination because yeah. it's, it's this whole chain of effect going down my leg. Um, and obviously you can't feel exactly where everything is. So um, I had to get used to falling and I had to get okay with falling because, um, you know, it's just human nature. We, we don't want to fall. It's, yeah. I think it's like, um, it's like as humans, our most basic 
thing is to be able to walk properly. And I think when we fall, it's like, you know, that dread and that heartache. Yeah. Um, yes. And I think that's another thing that this whole thing is experience has taught me is to be okay with failure and, and almost welcome it because there's less in, in it as well. I love that. And one of my favorite quotes is it's not failure, it's feedback. And if you think about it from that perspective, it will welcome the feedback and, and look at it from a much more positive lens that just because it didn't work that way or the response you got wasn't what you had wanted to get, that is an opportunity to rethink, recalibrate, restructure, and go in a different direction. Exactly. Um, but so you were saying that you're now in New York. Um, I believe that you um, are very um, experienced in social media, if memory <laughs> serves. Tell us a little bit about what you were, were doing with that. So I've been doing social media for probably six years, helping um, a lot of companies and small businesses pick up their social media. Um, I especially enjoy working with uh, non-for-profits. So I'm on, on the board of a few non-for-profits and um, that's probably my favorite aspect. Um, I have a few ideas about setting up um, an online mentoring company. Um, and, and I think that the whole fitness world and this arena and everything going online, um, I want to try bridge the gap between uh, professional athletes and Paralympians and, um, you know, the 11 year old me who didn't have yes. that person to Brilliant. so that's what that's what's this whole experience and this pandemic's kind of allowed me to sit back and rethink about what i actually want to do and i'm so passionate about helping people and coaching people that i want to bridge the gap between the athletes and you know the people who look up to those athletes. It's so brilliant, and that's actually exactly why I started this show, because I knew that right now, you know, with with productions and whatnot being shut down, our gamut management members weren't going to be so busy over the last yeah. couple of months. So the best way that I could share people's stories and show the world that people with disabilities are just people was to talk yeah their stories and and get it out there and so and it's probably this show has been one of the most wonderful things that i ever have done in my life just with the incredible people that i've met and stories that they've shared and their vulnerability and authenticity it's been amazing and i think your idea is absolutely brilliant and and certainly would be a game changer for the 11 year old Emily and the yeah. millions of Emily's out there that are struggling that that feel lonely and like the only person in the world that is you know has a, a disability certainly I can empathize with that with Oliver even because he has his version is very very rare so he may never meet another person in his lifetime that has his version of muscular dystrophy but he can empathize with people that have different abilities. Yeah. And that this that's just brilliant what you're thinking of doing. Now, before I forget, if people um, want to get in touch with you or have more questions or want to talk about this brilliant idea, what's the best way for them to connect with you? Uh, I guess Instagram would be the best way. Uh, my, my handle is at Emily and Gray. So it's Emily and Anne is with an E, A-N-N-E, and Gray is... G R A Y. Perfect. Great through Instagram. Amazing. And now before we go, I um, am going to ask you one final question that I ask all of my guests. Um, and I'm really excited to hear what your answer is. So I am personally a very big believer in the notion of a vision board and putting your hopes and dreams and wishes or who you want to meet in this lifetime or what you want to do out there to the universe, whether that's on a board or just in your head and your heart if we got to look at onto emily gray's vision board what would we see i i really would want to um i would really want to make sure that people get the opportunity to 
access prosthetics better, especially in um, Africa and developing countries mm. um, where amputees are actually so common because of the wars and, you know, landmines that are, but have been left there for 10 years. Um, so I'd really want to see more amputees from developing countries with more opportunities for mobility. Um, and then also more opportunities for sports. Because I think that growing up in a developing country, you can be so resilient and so strong um, that often if they get the opportunity for those sports that they, you know, they really progress very quickly. So um, I'm passionate about helping others in, in developing countries. And, you know, my health and my fitness is so important to me that um, just on a personal level, I want to be able to, wherever I live, whatever I do, I want to make sure that I'm surfing or I'm climbing, I'm rock climbing or I'm swimming and I have access to all of those tools because at the end of the day, that's you know, my mobility and my mobility is my happiness. So I love that. Actually, I need to connect you with the people at No Barriers. Do you know of No Barriers? I've heard of No Barriers. Um, you embody are No Barriers. I, I think you will love Eric. He is the founder. Um, he is the first blind mountain climber to summit Mount Everest. And his whole mantra is there should be no barriers in life for people with disabilities, that we can find a way. And they, yeah. it's just a spectacular, spectacular organization. So I'm going to connect you guys yeah. because I think you, you definitely need to be a part of it. But... Well, can I can I ask you what's on your board? Oh my God! Thank you. Really, generally, I'd like to I show it. I'm not by my board right now, which I keep um, by my side. But on my board, I have pictures of me literally sitting next to Ellen being interviewed. Um, I am on a magazine cover with Oprah, talking about um, leaders in in the world. Um, I am next to J um, Guy Raz, who um, does How I Built This, the <laughs> podcast. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm literally like in front of a microphone next to like, I, I mean, I have it really detailed. Um, and my, you know, I'm always adding to it because some things have happened, which is so exciting. Yeah. So I'm um, adding to it. Um, and my, my biggest one right now is I want this show to be on an actual network. I think that it's time to dispel the typical talk show and have real people with real stories and not in an, you know, necessarily the inspirational people with disabilities way, but just showing that they're people and the incredible things that they have done in their life and, and changes that have been made and all of that. And, so that is my current goal that I intend to make happen. I love it. I love it. So that's my board, but it'll change. It evolves. It, 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 like it always evolves. And I think yeah. that, you know, we were talking earlier about failures. Um, and I think that sometimes when you go for one thing and it doesn't quite work out, you meet that one person who will connect you with this whole other idea realm of, of uh, events and experiences that you haven't even thought of. And I think that, you know, with your ever-changing uh, vision board, I think that that's um, really, really cool. I do think. I, yeah. I completely agree. Emily, it was such a joy to have you all on the show. I, I am so grateful to know you in my life. Uh, shout out to Robert <laughs> Tuckman, who introduced us. So thank you for that. Um, and I cannot wait to watch you change the world. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking, talking to you. Thank you. If you would like to be on the Gamut Network, please email us at talent at gamutmanagement.com to tell us why you'd be a great guest. Please also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Gamut Network, as well as follow us on our social platforms of Gamut Management. Thank you again. Thank you, Mindy. Bye. Bye.